Here at Stanford, when I say I work in oil and gas, I can see your reactions. <laughs> in a place where sustainability dominates conversation, my industry often feels like the elephant in the room. But when I visit developing countries in Asia, home to more than 60% of the global population, the reaction is different. In Asia, energy isn't just about sustainability. First and foremost, it's about putting food on the table. This stark contrast reflects a deeper issue because energy debate is often framed as a battle. Renewables versus fossil fuels, good versus bad, and clean versus dirty. But the reality is not so simple. The world is hungry for energy, and our planet is suffering. Just last month, we saw wildfires burn through LA, forcing families to leave their homes and filling the air with smoke. These disasters are clear signs that climate change is real. But with a growing population and rapid modernization around the world, Global energy demand is projected to grow 50% between now and 2050. So how are we going to deliver this demand? With energy that's reliable, affordable, and sustainable. This is the energy trilemma. For future leaders in this room, seeking to change lives, organizations, and the world, allow me to share my perspective to understand this trilemma. I grew up in Malaysia, where energy transformed my nation. The discovery of oil and gas in the 1970s fueled rapid growth, turning a commodity-based economy into a modern industrialized nation. In Kuala Lumpur, the Petronas Twin Towers serve as a symbol of our progress. As a kid, I saw them as the heart of an institution shaping the future of my nation. Petronas gave me a college scholarship, sending me to Austin, Texas to study the forces that shape the earth and society. After four years, Walking back to the towers as an employee, I felt pure pride. Finally, I was part of the industry driving my country forward. Reflecting on my early days working in the towers, I came to see oil and gas as more than a resource. It's a driver for progress for my country and me. After eight years working in Malaysia, I was sent to Myanmar to help develop its natural gas, a country full of potential, but held back by energy poverty. In, in Yangon, a city of 7 million people, I experienced power cuts almost every day. Businesses and the wealthy relied on dirty diesel generators. But for the poor, everything just stopped after sunset. Today, around 750 million people around the world are still living without proper access to electricity, trapped in the dark. My time in Myanmar shows that energy poverty doesn't just slow things down, it keeps people stuck. And we have a responsibility to deliver energy to these people. After Myanmar, I moved to Houston, Texas, the energy capital of the world. I led a joint venture drilling eight kilometers beneath the seabed in waters two kilometers deep in the Gulf of Mexico, or perhaps America. <laughs> we unlocked 
200 million barrels of resources, enough to power more than 10 million homes in a year. The Gulf today produces some of the lowest carbon oil in the world, with emissions 46% lower than the global average. And yes, everything is baked in Texas. <laughs> but not just in oil and gas, renewables too. Did you know that if you go to West Texas, you could see wind farms and solar panels stretching for miles. And Texas is the number one renewable power producer in the country. I also learned that Houston is not just about drill, baby drill. <laughs> it's a hub of energy innovation. Innovations in oil and gas have unleashed the shale revolution, making the US the world's number one natural gas producer and a leader in energy independence. Over the past decade, the shift from coal to natural gas has cut US power sector emissions by almost 40%, while keeping energy reliable and affordable for you. Houston showed me that the future of energy is not either renewables or fossil fuel. It's both. But as a geologist, and Earth scientists, I care deeply about our planet. Like all of you, I want to protect it and be part of this energy transition. From Malaysia to Myanmar to Houston, I have seen what energy builds, what happens when it's missing, and how it's changing. Today's energy mix is almost like our food. Coal is the cheap fast food. It fills you up, but the least healthy. Oil and gas are the rice and grains what billions rely on today. And renewables are your fresh fruits and veggies better for us and our planet. But the reality is the world can't afford to change the diet overnight, but we can shift the mix for a more sustainable and healthy future. So the energy transition is one of the biggest challenges humanity faces. It's not just about the environment. It's also about the economics, supply chain, innovation, and policy. Today, Silicon Valley is driving climate tech innovation. But breakthrough needs policy support and global deployment. Wall Street is funding green energy projects, but the world still needs natural gas funding to keep the economies running. And Houston, long the engine of oil and gas, must also lead in decarbonization and renewables. Through my perspective, the energy transition is not about picking sides. It's about delivering the solutions. The energy trilemma means that the world needs all of it. More renewables, better storage, advanced nuclear, green hydrogen, and yes, cleaner oil and gas through carbon capture, methane reduction, and efficiency. So, the next time you ask me what I do for a living, here's my answer. I work in oil and gas, leading the transition toward a net zero future. Because the world needs leaders within and beyond this room, working together to drive real change. Now, my question to you is, what role will you play in shaping the future of energy? Thanks.